anyone who is very, very clever. Now, I don't just mean someone who is very good at mathematics or geography or some subject you learn in school. I mean someone who is just very clever about life, who has what we often call common sense. He or she has a knack for figuring out very quickly how to get out of a sticky situation or even how to avoid one in the first place. Hello everyone, I'm Kathleen Pelly. Welcome to Journey with Story. I'm sure some of you do know a person like that, someone who has lots of common sense. Usually they are the sort of person we want to be with us when we set off on a journey or on an adventure. Well, today's story is a very famous tale by a very famous writer, Rudyard Kipling, who wrote a book called The Just So Stories about all kinds of animals. We've recorded some of them before in our podcast, but today's story is called How the Whale Got His Throat. And in it, you're going to meet a character who has a knack for getting out of sticky situations Rudyard Kipling describes him as a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Don't you just love those words? Rudyard Kipling's stories are full of marvellous words like these. And don't worry if you can't understand every single one. You'll get the meaning as we go along. Sagacity, in case you're wondering, just means wisdom and it comes from the word sage. Thanks to all of our listeners of Infinite Resource and Sagacity for rating, reviewing and sharing this podcast. Oh, there's a little fish in this story and he's called a stute fish. And stute is a shortened form of the word astute. So when we finish the story, I bet you'll know what the word astute means. Now, let's take a journey with... How the whale got his throat. On the sea, once upon a time, oh my best beloved, there was a whale, and he ate fishes. He ate the starfish and the garfish, and the crab and the dab, and the place and the dace the skate and his mate, and the mackerel and the pickerel, and the really truly twirly whirly eel. All the fishes he could find in all the sea, he ate with his mouth so. Till at last there was only one small fish left in all the sea, and he was a small, stute fish and he swam a little behind the whale's right ear so as to be out of harm's way. Then the whale stood up on his tail and said, I'm hungry. And the small stute fish said in a small stute voice, Oh, noble and generous cetacean, have you ever tasted man? No, said the whale. What is he like? Oh, nice, said the small stute fish. Nice, but but nobly. Then fetch me some, said the whale. And they made the sea froth up with his tail. One at a time is enough, said the stute fish. If you swim to latitude 50 north and longitude 40 west, that is magic, you will find sitting on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing on but a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders, you must not forget the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife, one shipwrecked mariner, who, it is only fair to tell you, is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, as fast as he could swim. And on a raft in the middle of the sea, with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas breeches, a pair of suspenders, you must pretend. 
particularly remember the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife, he found one single, solitary, shipwrecked mariner trailing his toes in the water. He had his mummy's leave to paddle or else he would never have done it because he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Then the whale opened his mouth back and back and back till it nearly touched his tail and he swallowed the shipwrecked mariner and the raft he was sitting on and his blue canvas breeches and the suspenders, which you must not forget, and the jackknife. He swallowed them all down into his warm, dark, inside cupboards and then he smacked his lips so and turned round three times on his tail. Imagine a picture of the whale swallowing the mariner with his infinite resource and sagacity and the raft and the jackknife and his suspenders, which you must not forget. The buttony things are the mariner's suspenders and you can see the knife close by them. He is sitting on the raft, but it has tilted up sideways so you don't see much of it. The whitey thing by the mariner's left hand is a, a piece of wood that he was trying to row the raft with when the whale came along. The piece of wood is called the jaws of a gaff. The mariner left it outside when he went in. The whale's name was Smiler and the mariner was called Mr. Henry Albert Bivens A.B. The little stoot fish is hiding under the whale's tummy or else I would have drawn him. The reason that the sea looks so ooshy-scooshy is because the whale is sucking it all into his mouth so as to suck in Mr. Henry Albert Bivens and the raft and the jackknife and the suspenders. You must never forget the suspenders. By the way, if you're wondering why the writer's talking about a picture, if you get the book from the library about how the whale got his throat, then you'll see some drawings in there of the whale and Mr. Henry Albert Bivens and the stute fish. Back to the story now. But as soon as the mariner, who was a man of infinite resource and sagacity, found himself truly inside the whale's warm, dark, inside cupboards, he stumped and he jumped and he thumped and he bumped and he pranced and he danced and he banged and he clanged and he hit and he bit and he leaped and he creeped and he prowled and he howled and he hopped and he dropped and he cried and he sighed and he crawled and he bawled and he stepped and he leapt and he danced hornpipes which he shouldn't have and the whale felt most unhappy indeed. Have you forgotten the suspenders? So he said to the stute fish, This man is very nobly, and besides his make me hiccup, what shall I do? Tell him to come out, said the stute fish. So the whale called down his own throat to the shipwrecked mariner, Come out and behave yourself, I've got the hiccups. Nay, nay, said the mariner, not so, but far otherwise. Take me to my natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion and I'll think about it. And he began to dance more than ever. You'd better take him home, said the stute fish to the whale. Well, I ought to have warned you that he is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam and swam with both flippers and his tail as hard as he could for the hiccups and at last he saw the mariner's natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion and he rushed halfway up the beach and opened his mouth wide and wide and wide and said change here for Winchester Ashelow, Nashua, Keene and stations on the Fitchburg Road And just as it said, fish, the mariner walked out of his mouth. But while the whale had been swimming, 
The mariner, who was indeed a person of infinite resource and sagacity, had taken his jackknife and cut up the raft into a little square grating all running crisscross, and he had tied it firm with his suspenders. Now you know why you were not to forget the suspenders. And he dragged that grating good and tight into the whale's throat, and there it stuck. Then he recited the following sloka, which, as you have not heard it, I will now proceed to relate. By means of a grating, I have stopped your eating. For the mariner, he was also an Ibernian, and he stepped out on the shingle and went home to his mother, who had given him leave to trail his toes in the water, and he married and lived happily ever afterward. So did the whale. But from that day on, the grating in his throat, which he could neither cough up nor swallow down, prevented him eating anything except very, very small fish. And that is the reason why whales nowadays never eat men or boys or little girls. The small stute fish went and hid himself in the mud under the dorsals of the equator. He was afraid that the whale might be angry with him. Here is the whale looking for the little stute fish who is hiding under the door sills of the equator. The little stute fish's name was Pingle. He is hiding among the roots of the big seaweed that grows in front of the doors of the equator. I have drawn the doors of the equator. They are shut. They are always kept shut. Because a door ought always to be kept shut. The ropey thing right across it is the equator itself. And the things that look like rocks are the two giants, Moar and Koar, that keep the equator in order. They drew the shadow pictures on the doors of the equator, and they carved all those twisty fishes under the doors. The beaky fish are called beaked dolphins, and the other fish with their queer heads are called hammer-headed sharks. The whale never found the little stute fish till he got over his temper. And then they became good friends again. The sailor took the jackknife home. He was wearing the blue canvas breeches when he walked out on the shingle. The suspenders were left behind, you see, to tie the grating with, and that is the end of that tale. Well, did you have a favourite character in this story? The mariner or sailor? Or maybe it was the whale? Or maybe the little stute fish? I bet you now know what the word astute means. Yes, it means very clever, like our little stute fish. I wonder what you think the story's souvenir is? Maybe you can talk that over with your friends or your mum and dad. And if you want to see some pictures of the story, you can go to the library and check out the Just So stories. And you'll see a picture there of the whale and the mariner and the little stute fish. But if you feel like drawing your own version, we'd love to see those. So do send them to us at www.journeywithstory.com Cheerio then. Join me next time for... Journey with Story. Music and post-production was by Colette Jonas. <laughs>